And welcome in to the Main Event Sports Show, Main Event Sports TV, live here from beautiful, beautiful downtown Louisville, Kentucky, Turnerville Deli and Pizza Haven, 1101 South 1st Street. It is going down tonight. How you doing, my brother? Man, I am doing great. And you know, I am ecstatic. Yes. Less than one week, less than one week to the football is back. That's right. I mean, it's, it's back. Football season is here. Like, literally, you had the first four college football games of the year uh, this past Saturday, what they like to call week zero. Uh, week zero went down, um, and, and that was awesome. Uh, we got to see Hawaii and, and Colorado State and some of those other teams that no one cares about. Wofford and I think hey. Furman may have played. Hey, man, well, let me tell you. No one cares about it, though. I watched like, all <laughs> those games, so it doesn't matter. I was ecstatic. But, you know, what? this weekend – the official kickoff week one of college football is going to be off the charts. That's right. Like in, in years past, it was always you would open up your season with a gimme game. Yes. You know, like Alabama would go against somebody like Elon. Uville would take on somebody like Southwest Directional State, Missouri. South Carolina coastal, Upstate. On the coastal coast. Of directional institute of technology, you know schools ever heard of? Yes. And like all the big teams would just schedule uh, cream puffs and cupcakes as a way to kick off this season, because as we know in college football you don't get a uh, a preseason, so a lot of times you schedule kind of weaker opponents to kind of get you into the flow, and then you're ready to go. Right. But uh, not this year. No. But you know what? It's it's been trending that way for the last since the uh, advent. Of the playoff system. To me, that is like when it really changed. Like now, you can have a loss early. And we've seen Alabama on multiple occasions still make the college football playoff. We've seen teams be able to take a loss early. And teams have started to utilize that opportunity to kind of bolster their resume and, and not be afraid to take that on. And I think as you see the college football playoff continue to mature, you're going to see more and more of that, I think. I think you will. Plus, let's be honest, there's TV money in it. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Look at all the big games. We got Louisville, Alabama, prime time. Uh, you have Miami, LSU, prime time. Then yes. the 330 game, Auburn, Washington. Uh, I think Washington's number six and Auburn's number nine in the nation. So, yes. I mean, a lot of these teams are starting off neutral site games. So it's big revenue for both schools. Yes. It's almost, it's almost like a bowl game like atmosphere to kick off the season, which is. Which is awesome, man. I'm, I'm just beyond excited. Yeah, it's, it's time. I mean, what we've been hearing about, like, literally, um, you know, college football for Louisville fans, they've been excited about this season upcoming for, like, a couple of years. Since it was announced that Louisville was going to be playing Alabama, that's kind of been the talk. Like, everybody's been looking forward to this. I mean, you know, people were counting down – that means that that's going to be Puma Pass's, you know, junior year. Or, you know, that was before Lamar, Lamar Jackson. Year. Like, no, nobody knew Lamar Jackson was going to kind of take over. But that's what we heard when Louisville made that signing. They said that's either going to be Puma's, you know, second or third year as the Louisville quarterback. <laughs> like, everybody was kind of figuring that Lamar's probably going to be a running back by that time. And yours truly was one of those people. <laughs> But well, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. You know, everybody's been waiting for you it. Know, and since we're talking about college football, yes, let's go ahead and let's kind of jump right into the games that matter a lot to us, which would be Kentucky and Louisville, Central Michigan. And oh. Louisville, Kentucky <laughs> would obviously be Alabama versus Louisville, September 1st, prime time. Yes. What do you think? I mean, there's a lot of speculation going on. Alabama has, all, I mean, it's like almost a new team. It's almost like a new team, almost a new coaching staff, uh, new starters all over the place, a ton of injuries. They lost like a ton of linebackers. Yeah. Their safeties that look like they're maybe kind of thin this year for Alabama. Now, I say that, but I, I kind of want to put that in kind of uh, perspective. Like Alabama's backup's All-American. So, yes, they may be down to their third string. But their third string will probably start for most teams in yeah, the country. I, I was going to say, like, they're all five-star guys that are replacing them, like literally, just yeah, about literally. across I mean, it's the like, board. It's like Clemson last year. Clemson literally lost their entire defensive line to the NFL and then came back better. 
Yeah. They had a better defensive line than after. Yeah, and that's the thing with this game, uh, uh, heading into it. Um, everybody's, you know, like you always like to say, everybody's undefeated and everybody has the hopes, wishes, and dreams of what's going to come this year. And, and, you know, I think the Louisville fans, it's, it's very interesting. Because you, are, it, I don't want to call it the seven stages of grief, but I want to call it like the three or four stages of a college football fan that you go through through the month of August where, uh, you know, everybody thinks, for the most part, unless you're like an Alabama or Clemson fan, most everybody usually dreads, you know, what's upcoming for that year. So a lot of times they're kind of downplaying it or kind of down on their team. You kind of look at the warts and see everything that's going wrong. And then you get to kind of weak, two or three of August, and then you start to get excited and hopeful and start to think about everything that's new, things that can be better. You know, you get excited as you start looking at, uh, you know, the schedule and saying, well, I can see a win here. I can see it. Then you get that optimism. Well, then that last you know, stage. You know, and, and that's because we get all those reports on the cams. Yes, um, exactly. Bobby Blue Blood, he looks a thousand times better than did last year. Bigger, faster, oh my stronger. Gosh. Look at all the weight these guys are picking on. And then the other thing you have is that you have the um, your new recruits. Yes. A lot of times if they didn't come in early, this is their first time of practice. Now you're hearing about all the young guys that you recruited last year that now are coming up and say, oh, my God, he's much better than we thought he was going to be. He's working out with the ones. <laughs> this guy's working out with the twos. This guy added like – 50 more pounds of muscle mass. A guy that was hurt, he's now back, and he looks like a like a phenom. A Greek wow, god. We're, we're so excited. <laughs> I just can't wait to see what happens. Yes. You know, and I'm excited. Like, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Yeah. I'm excited about all things college football. I'm excited about Willie Taggart at FSU. I'm excited about Chip Kelly at USA. I'm excited about Scott Frost at Nebraska. But I'm more excited about the big question mark, September 1st, Louisville. Alabama. Ooh. I mean, Alabama has so many question marks. Almost a brand new coaching staff. You have several different players. So, guys that never played before forced to start. A couple of guys that were freshmen last year that actually were, you know, pretty big contributors in the national championship game are now back when be starters replacing veterans. Yeah. You know, you have a lot of injuries in Alabama. They lost the offensive line and kind of reshuffled offensive line for this game. Um, they lost a couple of the linebackers, so they're reshuffling the linebacker core for this game. You have a couple of young corners and safeties as well. So there's so much going on with Alabama, so much mystery. Like, who's going to be the quarterback? Are you going to go to Jalen Hurts? Are you going to go play Tua? Are you going to play both of them? You know, like, like what, what's going to happen? Yeah, I mean, and that's the big question, Mark. And I think that's where – and I do want to say what's up to all my people checking in on Facebook Live. Uh, everybody checking in, man. Make sure you guys get your comments, and we'll read them live on the air uh, with us. Uh, what, what's going on? Uh, my, my man Little Marshall's already checking in with the prediction. 31-17 cards. The boy's, He's ready. The, my man's drinking. Yeah. <laughs> my man on Facebook started drinking early. <laughs> Alabama <laughs> hasn't given up like – I mean, it, it, 30 points like in a while. Big, yeah, Big Lynn's calling a shot early. I, hey, he, he, believes, he believes in the Afros, man. America's finest receivers on Saturdays. He, he believes in them. He believes what Dan Fitzpatrick was selling. So, you know, we'll have to see. But that's why they play the game. But this is when that last stage of the college football fandom in the preseason comes in. That last week, week and a half, then the fear starts to set in. Like, you go from hope to now you're getting afraid because you know that, like, it's about to kick off for real, and then well, you, you have to see your team get out there. Let's go past being afraid. Of, <laughs> and let's go ahead and let's break down this game. Yes. Alabama versus the Little Fighting Cardinals, the beak with teeth. Coming into this game, like I said before, a lot of question marks in Alabama, a lot of holes. But Alabama probably has the greatest college football coach of all time in Nick Saban. Even, arguably. Arguably the greatest college football coach of all time. Definitely the best coach of the last several decades. Yes. And I will say this. I know Alabama fans, I, I know you're going to get mad, but he is the greatest coach in Alabama history, in my opinion. And I don't think he's even close. I like what Bear did. Don't get me wrong, but Bear did it before black guys, before <laughs> integration, so half his wins don't count to me. <laughs> I, I, don't, I do not start the record books until after integration. After that, before that, it really didn't matter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, that's different, different discussion for a different day. Yeah. Alabama comes with a ton of question marks. Louisville comes in 
with a ton of question marks. What's the defense going to look like? What's this brand new retooled defensive line going to look like with two um, JUCOs coming in, or two, I mean, one JUCO, one transfer coming in and anchor that, that defensive line? What are linebackers going to look like? What's the second? I mean, secondary has, a, on paper, has a ton of talent, but it's unproven talent. Guys that really haven't had a chance to play and start. You got Rajay Burns, come, a four star player from Trinity High School, went to Ohio State, now coming back home to play for the Louisville Cardinals, but he's never really played a lot of Ohio State, so you don't know what he's going to do. Well, I mean, you know, and that's the, that's the big question mark because I think uh, it's going to be very interesting because there are. Advantages. I think people see that when they look at this game, I don't really hear, and I know it's funny to say, people aren't really talking about the Alabama defense because Alabama lost so many playmakers off of their defense. They've kind of retooled the secondary. They've retooled the linebacking core, and they lost most of their defensive line standouts. So they have a lot of guys that are returning but no stars. And, and I think that nobody's really talking about the Alabama defense. And the Louisville defense was so bad last year that nobody really is, is talking about that either. They're talking about, you know, there are there is some talent in the secondary, but for the most part, it's all been about the offenses. It's, a, it's been about Tua Tonavaloa, you know, the quarterback that came in in the second half of the uh, uh, of the championship game, and his his lore has grown like Paul Bunyan. Like, people tend to forget that Tua had a decent second half. Georgia got ultra conservative, and Tua took a horrible sack and put Alabama into like third and a mile or fourth and a mile, and then he completes the the miracle catch, and of course Alabama goes along to win, goes on to win it. But everybody's kind of forgotten about that because, of course, Alabama did complete the comeback, they got the win, congratulations, they got the championship. But Nick Saban is not really hearing any of this conversation about. You know, two is guaranteed to be the starter. Jalen Hurts is going to be the starter. And he didn't even want to announce that starter today. And I, I don't think we're going to know who's going to really take that first snap until the game gets started. But everything's about the, uh, talking about the offense, at least for Alabama. Oh, and so far because, like, like I said, there's so many question marks. And let's be honest, people, I think just it's a given at this point that they think Alabama's defense is going to be good. It may not be great like it has been. But it's still going to be good. They're still going to be fundamentally sound. They're not going to make a lot of mistakes. Um, they're going to have speed at every position on the field. You still have, even though you don't have any stars, the guys that replace them are still all four-star recruited athletes. So they all have, like, a lot of talent. So talent is never going to be an issue in Alabama. Yes. It's just that how fast can they pick up the scheme? How fast can they get up to speed? Yeah, I mean, and, and, and get that experience. And, and, and conversely, Louisville's defense is the same thing. Yes. You got a bunch of guys that's never played at this level. They have talent. They were recruited by other programs. Like I said, they transferred in. So you got a lot of four star guys that are now transferring again, but they haven't taken a snap either at this level of, of college football, nor have they started before at this level of college football. So it's on the defensive side, there's so many question marks. But even with all the question marks, you still have to lean just towards Alabama just because you know the talent's there. Well, our man Nick Shumay checked in. He said, in his opinion, he said if we score, as in Louisville, if we score two touchdowns and a field goal and hold them under 35 points, he feels that's a good showing. And, and that's where I think a lot of Louisville fans are at coming into this game where I, I don't know if necessarily people are expecting Louisville to win, but they just want to see a good showing. And I really and truly believe, Haven, that if Louisville can keep this within at least a couple of touchdowns, I think Louisville could a actually move up and be considered to be a, a ranked team if they can have a good showing and, and even just stay you know, near close to in the game. I'm going to say this. That's crazy. The secret to beating Alabama, I'm, I'm not going to say it's simple, but the secret to beating Alabama is you have to put pressure on them by passing the ball. You're not going to run it down Alabama's throat. That's not going to happen. Yes. And I think, I, oddly enough, Puma being the better drop back passer may actually give you a better chance to beat Alabama than Lamar Jackson, oddly enough. Lamar's propensity to run against this type of defense, especially when he stops handing the ball to running backs, it gets kind of predictable. But I'm, for, for this type of talent and speed, I almost make it a little too easy on the defense. But it, 
the way I've seen teams beat Alabama before is that you spread them out, three, four, five wide receivers, and you throw it, and then you run and gun. You go no huddle, and you wear that defense down. You make them chase you all over the field, and that's usually how you beat Alabama. That's why Mississippi State has every year has come close to almost beating Alabama. Mm -hmm. They do it the same way is that they throw it on them. They go like four or five wide receivers deep. You know, I think the last time they beat Alabama, they only had like 75 yards rushing. The only reason you run against Alabama is to keep the defense honest. And if you can break off a five, six, seven-yard run, hey, that's, that's money in the bank. But usually protect the quarterback, five, six-step drop, let them have it. Bombs away. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's what it's all about. I mean, Bobby Petrino, uh, you know, is the master of that. I mean, his whole thing has always been, you know, to kind of feed the studs, keep teams off balance, and take advantage of an overaggressive defense. And that's what I think he's going to hope to kind of take advantage of um, against Alabama is you know Alabama's got speed. And they're going to have a lot of guys that are very aggressive and are going to want to get out there and make a play and make a big hit. And this is where maybe they can utilize that inexperience of Alabama against them, where they can maybe, you know, get those guys going one way on some of these fakes and then come back the opposite direction and then, you know, hit a play. I mean, and that's going to be the question mark is can they find ways to – Take advantage of an over-aggressive defense. Get your playmakers in space and then allow Jalen Smith, Seth Dawkins, Des Fitzpatrick, and some of those running backs to do their thing. Maybe, but the key to this game, and I've said it all summer long, the key to this game is going to be for Louisville, the offensive line. Yes. Can they keep Puma pass clean? They can keep him relatively clean and not flustered, especially – in the first half. That's when it's most critical. In the first half. Alabama's going to be hyped up. Louisville's going to be hyped up. It's going to be a lot of adrenaline. That pass rush is going to be extra fierce. But can you keep him clean in the first half? Because remember, this is Puma's first time starting in a college football game. If you allow Alabama's rush to get to him, being a young man, though, will that affect his poise? And that's what things have to worry about. If you can keep him clean through the first half, let him get kind of let him get his legs underneath them. Let him kind of get the feel for the game. Louisville has a chance. No, absolutely. I think that's the biggest thing is that if you can hold the tide, if you can hold the tide, you know, pun intended, if you can hold the tide in that first quarter and just stay in the game, not have the, the big turnover, or like we saw in the Chick-fil-A kickoff a couple of years ago, a freshman, Lamar Jackson, comes in for a trick play, the very first play of the game, and throws an interception. And literally, you give Auburn all types of momentum early in that game that you're trying to dig out of a hole the whole game. If Louisville can even get to the end of the first quarter 0-0, zero, zero, I think that would be a huge win because what happens is, especially when you're playing against the – uh, more notable team or the team that's supposed to be the, the, the favorite is that if the longer that game stays close, the team that's not expected to win continues to get more and more confidence, and that's where Louisville cannot – you can't win the game in the first quarter, but you can lose it. And, yes. and, and I am a big believer in that. And if Louisville can find a way to not turn the ball over – Which is key. Not have the big special teams mistake – not, you know, turn the ball over, you know, deep in your own end zone, have a dumb run back where you take the ball out of the end zone and get tackled on, like, the seven-yard line. Things like that, that, you know, those silly mistakes on, on muff kicks, uh, or, you know, returning punts, things like that. If Louisville can stay away from those earlier, I think they'll have a shot to stay Because out. even if you outplay Alabama, turnovers, mistakes, Alabama will beat you, even if they're young, because they're always going to be well-coached team. Yes. You've very rarely seen an, an Alabama team that's not fundamentally sound, that's not well-coached. I remember the first national championship game between Alabama and Clemson. Clemson outplayed Alabama. Absolutely. Completely outplayed Alabama, but busted coverages, turnovers, Bad penalties. Alabama had 21 points off three Clemson turnovers in that game. And that was the and game. And that was good night, sweetheart. And that was the and game. They lost, and, and Clemson lost by three points. That was it. Clemson outplayed them. But the mistakes, especially at crucial times of the game, Alabama was able to capitalize. 
for Louisville. Louisville's almost average, like almost two turnovers for the past two seasons per game. Yeah. They, they can't do that against Alabama. You turn the ball over twice, Louisville loses. You remember two years ago with the fumble team where it seemed like every time the guys got touched, they, they Louisville averaged more than a fumble a game. Everybody <laughs> fumbled that game. I'm just like – I'm just saying, two years ago, it was like all the tight ends, wide receivers, everybody was fumbling. Louisville can't do that this time. That cannot happen. Louisville cannot fumble. Hey, now they we cannot got- turn the ball over. No interceptions. If they play good, fundamentally sound football, they will be in this game. Agreed. Now, now we got a couple of comments coming in. Uh, Nick Shume says, uh, have to be aggressive on the ground. Reduce the number of turnover opportunities in the air. Uh, do, the cards ha- or do the cards have the ground power? So, do, 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 you know, do they have the running game to be able to move the chains in those short, uh, you know, third and short situations? Honestly, I, th- I think it's the opposite. I think rather than have that control the game on the ground, no. You got to air it out. Alabama's one of the teams you, you have to air it out. So, so, so you know, but can't, now if they, if they have to, because I, I think that especially in these types of games, it comes down to those third and shorts to be able to keep a drive alive and to be able to get off the field on third downs. Like, I, I think that's going to be important. Does Louisville, with their, you know, we know they have some big physical backs. We know they got Colin Wilson. We know they have Day Williams. Uh, we, we've talked a lot about that right side of the, uh, the offensive line with Bentley and uh, Lucas McNeil as well as Makai Becton. Can Louisville pick up that tough first down running the ball? They can, but I would rather do play action pass and throw a quick slant for three or four yards. I feel that. I, I mean, I know. I, I totally agree. I mean, we remember Bobby Petrino. How many times, especially when Stephon LaForce was there, would we see the fake to Eric Shelton come back on the naked bootleg toss out to Gary Barnage and, and to pick go. up twenty or thirty yards? And that's what they would do. And Absolutely. a lot of times, a lot of times, you see like uh, you see Gary Barnage come across the formation. Yes. Pause. Go back across formation. Fake it to the Bush Shelton. Smith or whether Lionel Gates, a whole NFL crew of running backs he had, pull it back out, and they never be Gary Barnard's wide open for 15 yards. Yeah. You know, th- that's what you have to do against Alabama. You cannot run the ball against Alabama. You can't play SEC ball and think, well, because I know Bobby's normally like a 60-40 run guy. Against Alabama, you have to be almost like a 70-30 pass run guy. You have to air it out on that. And if, if the pass rush is too, if the pass rush is too great, quick slants. You're gonna have to hit them with a, a couple of screens, a couple of wheel routes out the, you know, out of backfield, something to kind of slow that rush down. But you're going to have to air it out. Now, our main man Russ Hensley, uh, aka the Cardinals, beat. You know, I, I, I do. Russ, he checked in. He said, if we beat them, it will be like. Uh, Tre- Trevor Knight and Oklahoma did it in the 2014 Sugar Bowl. And Trevor Knight, what did he do in that game? Completed passes, just like you talked about. That's spreading, what do. spreading Alabama out. We saw Johnny Football and, and, and Texas A&M do it as well. Spreading the ball out. Boise State. Boise State doing it. You have to spread these big physical teams out and you know make them. Because Alabama doesn't recruit for spread passing teams. They don't face it in the SEC. That team is built for a pro-style big Physical for the LSUs, teams. for the Auburns, the for the Floridas. They're not made to, to be spread out. So that's why I got to spread them out. You know, when Georgia was, was having her way, they spread Alabama out, bombs away. And that, that's what you got to do. And uh, I, and, oh, and, and our man Demetrius Candy checked in and said, roll, tide, roll. So that was just for you, Haven. Hey, you know. <laughs> it is what it is. It's Alabama's first game of the season. I'm excited. So let me get your quick yes. keys to the game. Quick keys to the game. And then prediction. Okay. Um, my keys to the game would probably be this. A, the offensive line has got to hold their own weight. If they can open up holes, especially off that right-hand side, and be able to pick up those third and shorts, you're going to have to convert some of those to beat Alabama. I know that you want to spread them out, but you're not going to score on one or two play touchdowns. Uh, you're you're going to have to be able to compete, compete some of those, complete some of those tough, uh, I, you know, th- those tough situations down in distant situations. So they're going to have to be able to block well. They're going to have to give Puma at least three and a half, four seconds. If they can do that, that's going to be huge. And then conversely, on the defensive side of the ball, it was announced today that Gigi Robinson 
did hold on to his defensive tackle position. Uh, he's going to be stop, uh, uh, starting opposite of uh, Mike Boykin. Jared Goldwire will be the third guy rotating in at the defensive tackle position. GG, I'm going to need for you and the defensive line to step up and have a huge game. The defense, you know, when you talk about beating these big teams, yes, we can talk about the offensive fireworks. We can talk about the advantages with the wide receivers. Those guys have to do their job to be able to have a chance. But where the game's going to be won and lost, can the defensive line and those linebackers get pressure and make Tua Tonavaloa uncomfortable? If the defensive line can get penetration and do that against an offensive line that's been retooled by Alabama, these guys are young, they're inexperienced, they're still trying to figure their way out. If they can do that, and this offensive line that's very experienced for Louisville can come out there and show what they're made of, I think that's going to be the biggest key. Give me a prediction. Um, you know what? Uh, my prediction is I, I think that Louisville's going to come out there. I think they are going to keep it close. Um, I do think that Louisville's going to have opportunities. Um, you know, with this being Puma Pass's first game, I don't know if that's going to be enough to get it done. Um, I would say that I, I, right now, um, I do think that Louisville's going to beat that magical 23-point barrier that I believe is the, the number you gave me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say – uh, Louisville 24, Alabama 31. But I do think it's going to be closer than the pundits realize. Oh, there we go. There you go. So my keys to the game actually kind of mirror your keys to the game. Uh, I do believe Louisville does have to run the ball. I know they said they got to throw it and be prolific passing. I believe they do have to run the ball, but I want to see them run from a spread formation. Spread them out and then run and attack them from there. This we're missing. Honestly, I think this would not have a Tobias really hurts a lot. Because I think if you spread them out and run from that formation, having a fullback as a lead blocker would, would have been tremendous. Yeah. Uh, so you may kind of have to uh, kind of retool that a little bit. But I still think running from a spread-esque formation um, would be your best chance. I agree with you as well. It's going to come down to the two lines, offensive line, defensive line. Can Louisville's offensive line – sustain that initial rush you're going to get because Alabama's going to be hyped up that first quarter. Can Louisville's offensive line give Puma three seconds to pass? Four, I think, is asking too much. But I think three, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, that's a slant, 15-yard crossing route. You can, get a lot, you can get a lot of things done in three seconds. So if they can give them three seconds, three and a half seconds, Louisville has a chance so they can keep Puma clean. Conversely, on a defensive line, they're going to have to stop the run. Damian Harris, a Kentucky product, is itching to run all over you, and he, he's a bad boy, and he has tons of experience. You can't let him churn out four yards, five yards a carry because then it, then it won't matter who's quarterback. Right. They'll go play action pass and will burn us all day, all night long. So it's up to the defensive line. If they can hold their water, they can slow down the runs. I believe Alabama's going to run hard and run heavy. And they're going to try just to pound us and pound us and pound us and wear us out. If that defensive line can hold serve, because Louis linebacker core is okay. I think their strength is probably be the secondary. But I, I look for Alabama to attack our linebackers with their tight ends. And they always got some five-star wide receiver tucked away someplace. But I think actually the second actually may be a wash. It's going to come down to the line. If I had to give a prediction right now, I would say maybe 31-21 Bama. So we both got Alabama getting to that 31-point plateau. But I would not be surprised if it's, if it's actually lower scoring than that. It'll be interesting. I mean, it's the first game of the year. There's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, newness. So, yeah, I mean, usually a lot of times when they, people expect those high-scoring games, they end up becoming, you know, to, to borrow yeah, a phrase from that. JR, a good old slobber knocker. Hey, there you go. <laughs> but, hey, tell us what you think about this game. Leave a comment below because, hey, we'll love to chat back with you, and we will. So tell us what you think about the game, and don't forget to hit subscribe because with our subscribers, with our viewers and, and followers, hey, this could not happen. We guys want to thank you guys for tuning in every Monday. And better than tuning in, if you live in the, in the Louisville, Kentucky area, come on down and see us. 1201 South 1st Street, Tunerville Deli and Pizza right here on the corner. Great food as you can see, great wings as you can see. 
So come on out, hang out. We got great music. So come hang out with us. And the barkeeper is awesome. He is outstanding. He's the man. Hey, so thanks for tuning in to the Maven Sports Show. Peace.